Charles E. Lawrence, really great. One of my best pupils. Stole my whole act. I did all that stuff years ago. Anyway, I'm very happy to be here at Bally's Rand Hotel. Yeah, I was here a year ago, and I want to tell you, I look forward to coming back again, so I'll leave you all now. <laughs> I just got off a plane. I was in California. I said to the clerk, I got three pieces of luggage. I want this piece to go to Cleveland. I want this piece to go to Miami, and I want this piece to go to Toronto. He says, we can't do that. You did it last year. <laughs> the food on the plane was pit for a king. Here, king, here, king. <laughs> Any Italians here tonight? Yeah. We just got the news. A bomb fell on Italy. It slid off. Why does a new Italian ship have to... I forgot the joke. <laughs> I love the Italian people. During World War II, an Italian girl saved my life. She hid me in her cellar. It was in Cleveland. <laughs> Why does the new Italian Navy have glass-bottomed boats? So they can see the old Italian Navy. I was just down in Miami Beach appearing in front of some elderly citizens down there, and one of the... And, and, and there was an old man sitting on the park bench. He was crying. The cop said, what are you crying about? He said, well, I lost my wife about a year ago, and I found a young lady. She moved in with me. She cooks for me, does my laundry. She's wonderful. He said, what are you crying about? I forgot where I live. There's a widow walking around the Miami Beach lobby in the hotel. She sees a strange man. So where are you from? We've never seen you here before. He said, tell you the truth, I just got out of jail for killing my wife with a hacksaw. She says, oh, you're single. <laughs> I don't get it. Listen. <laughs> Two Jewish guys in the gym, one's putting a girdle on. His friend says, just when do you wear a girdle? Since my wife found it in the club compartment of my car. <laughs> in Israel, a fellow drives up to the cop. Can I park here? He says, no. How about these other cars? They didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jewish lady walks in the record store. Do you have a low dolly? The man says, what speed? She says, hello, darling. <laughs> Little Jewish man gets hit by a car. They're waiting for the ambulance. The cop takes his jacket off, covers him. He said, you comfortable? He said, I make a nice living. <laughs> Miami Beach, the little Jewish grandmother is supposed to take care of the Jewish grandson by the water. She turns her head away. A wave washes the kid way out. They call the lifeguard, the helicopter, the police. They finally grab the little kid. They bring him in. They pump him out for an hour. The kid starts to breathe again. The grandmother says he had a hat. <laughs> I love this crowd. You know what Moses said when he stood on top of Mount Sinai? This would be a good place to put a hospital. <laughs> Two guys me once said, what's the latest dope on Wall Street? He said, my son. <laughs> Guy walked up to me on Broadway. You know where Central Park is? I said, no. He said, I'll mug you here. One fellow said, give me $10 till payday. I said, when is payday? He said, you ought to know. You're the one that's working. <laughs> Cheer up back there. Cheer up. <laughs> Another guy said, I haven't tasted food in two days. I said, you ought to force yourself. <laughs> I'm in Las Vegas. The guy said, you see a cop around there? I said, no. He said, stick him up. 
I said, stick what up? He said, don't mix me up. This is my first job. <laughs> hold up, man goes in the bank. Give me all your cash. He gives him the cash. He says, look, this is my first hold up. Don't I get a blender? <laughs> hold up, man. I said, stick him down. I said, you mean stick him up? He said, no wonder I've made any money. Hold on, man walks in the bank. Give me all your cash. She says, here, take the books to him. 10,000 short. <laughs> Give him money. They play horses. I played a great horse in the derby. Took seven horses to beat him. <laughs> this horse was so slow, the jockey kept a diary of the trip. <laughs> jockey hit the horse. The horse turned around and said, what are you hitting me for? There's nobody behind us. That's the first time I ever saw a horse start from a kneeling position. He was so late getting home, he tiptoed in the stable. I don't mind when the horse just left at the post. I don't mind when the horse comes up to me in the grandstand and asks, which way do they go? But when I see the horse I bet on at the $2 window playing another horse in the same race, I feel real good. I was out visiting my son who just made a movie in California. I know him personally. And, uh... I got a call from a studio. Henry, how much you want to do a picture with Fire Forsyth? I said, $50,000. They called back. They said, how about $20,000? I said, I'll pay it. <laughs> she dressed in one room. I dressed in the next room. There was a little hole in the wall. I let her look. <laughs> I'm supposed to do a home box office with Milton Braille, who just had a... He had a... a did I tell you about it? No. Milton Berger just had an operation, a charisma bypass. <laughs> Milton and I are going to do a scene. I'd like to do it for you now. See if you like it. I'm sitting at a bar having a drink of Jim Beam, my new sponsor. Over here's a man on a stool. He falls down. I pick him up. Bartender, do you know where this man lives? I'll give him a lift home in my car. Tell me where he lives. I grab the man, pull him down to the car, put him in the back seat. He falls down. I get to the address they gave me. I pull the man out of the car. He falls down three more times. I pick him up each time. I knock on the door, Mrs. Phillips. I brought your husband home. She says, where's his wheelchair? <laughs> I love this crowd tonight. Oh, this is fun, really. I'm enjoying this. I wish my mother were here. My mother was 88 years old, never used glasses, drank right out of the bottle. A drunk, <laughs> a drunk gets in front of a judge. He says, my good man, you've been brought here for drinking. He said, okay, judge, let's get started. <laughs> I saw a drunk walk up to a parking meter. He puts a dime in, the arrow goes to 60. He said, gee, I lost 100 pounds. Two drunks walking along Broadway. One goes down the subway, comes up the other entrance. His friend is waiting for him. Where were you? He said, I was some guy's basement. He got a set of trains. <laughs> the average person today is worried. There's nothing to worry about in New York. Uh, the Russians will never get there. No place to park. <laughs> I saw a man lying in the gutter. I said, are you sick? And I help you? He said, no, I found a parking place. I sent my wife to buy a car. You know, I've been playing nightclubs really all my life. I was uh, appearing at a place in uh, Patterson, Toledo, Venice. I had a tough boss. He used to stab me good night. <laughs> One guy said, I'll bet you $10 you're dead. I was afraid to bet him. <laughs> but you get, <laughs> you get people today, they worry about this, they worry about that. The waitress, you look tired. Go to my room and rest. I had a rough night, folks. There was a girl knocking my hotel room door all night long. Finally, I let her out of the room. <laughs> Couple check into a hotel right next to the railroad station. No more rooms left in town. There was a convention there. So they go up to that room, and the man goes out to buy a paper, and the lady lies down to take a rest. All of a sudden, a train comes by. Zoom! 
The vibrations knock her out of bed on the floor. Ten minutes later, another train. Zoom! The vibrations knock her out of bed on the floor. She calls the manager. What kind of a hotel is this? I'm lying down to take a rest, and a train came by so close, the vibrations from the train knocked me out of bed on the floor. He said, I'd like to see that. She's come upstairs. <laughs> he comes upstairs. She's lying in that bed for a minute. Just then, the husband walks in. What are you doing here? Believe it or not, I'm waiting for a train. They gave me a nice room here. I got a room and a bath. A little inconvenient. They're in two different buildings. <laughs> I closed the door. The doorknob got some bed with me. I called down. I said, is this room service? She said, yes. I said, send up a room. <laughs> I want to tell you what happens, you know. Everybody's playing golf nowadays. The average guy goes to a golf course and said, look, I can't see good. Get me a caddy with good eyesight. After I hit the ball... I want the caddy to tell me where the ball went. They bring in an 80-year-old caddy. Good eyesight. The man hits the ball. He said to the caddy, did you see where the ball went? He says, yeah. He says, wait, I forgot. <laughs> I was appearing up in Wayne County, Michigan, for 500 priests who were getting together in the conclave. And one of the priests was a, was a former stockbroker. He said, honey, liven us up, will you? Say whatever you want. I said, you want me to do that? He said, yeah. I said, once I was going to be a priest, I couldn't drink that early in the morning. I said, all you guys ought to get married to see what hell is really like. <laughs> and I told a story about Father O'Hara in Boston. He told a story. A lady walks up, good morning, Father O'Hara. He says, good morning, Mrs. O'Keefe. Do you know that your left breast is hanging out? She said, my God, I left the baby on the bus. <laughs> <laughs>